This hands-on video is part of a video course called Understanding Docker and Docker Compose 100% hands-on. If you like this video, check out the link in the description below. For more videos like this, subscribe to this channel and give a thumbs up. Now, let's go. Welcome to the first lecture of our Docker course. And in this lecture, we are going to run a single Docker container and I explain to you step by step what is going on when we are running this container. Now, let me enter the command first and see what it does. And then I explain to you what it actually means what we are typing here. So docker run dash it ubuntu ubuntu slash bin slash bash. Okay, let's run this and see what's happening. You can see here it's unable to find image Ubuntu late is locally pulling it from uh, library Ubuntu and then it's downloading a couple of files extracting and then it says digest download new images from the latest and then we see another prompt. Now one thing that you should pay attention to is that this prompt is my Windows prompt and this prompt is a Linux prompt. How does that work? Now, if you say docker run, then you say usually you want to run an image and that image comes from docker hub. Now, docker hub is uh, available on the hub.docker.com and I'm logged in. I don't know if you need to log in, uh, but I created the username and then you can search for images. And one of them is, for example, Ubuntu. And when I say docker run Ubuntu, then it will download the Ubuntu image it's in Docker official image, and it will run this Ubuntu image. You can run different versions of Ubuntu locally on your Docker machine just by saying Docker run Ubuntu. And then you could say uh, a double point here and then the version. But in our case, it's going to be the latest if you do not say any version. And then you say you want to start a specific process. And that is very, very important because when with Docker, you are always running a single process and the container is running only as long as this process is running. And that's an important concept to understand because in a Docker container, only one process is running. You can, you can start, you can fork more processes underneath this process. For example, if I have a bin bash and I start this process, then Docker will wait for this process to end and no matter if this process is going to start other processes, if this process ends, the container ended. Then we have one flag, IT, interactive and terminal. So interactive means I can actually type something here and terminal means it will give me a terminal. Now I can do LS, for example, it will give me a Linux file system. And well, I can barely read it because it's in my PowerShell here, blue on blue. That might not be ideal, but I hope you get the idea that this file system is actually from my container because when I say docker run dash id my image Ubuntu bin bash, then it will start the bash inside and latest Ubuntu container interactively and it will wait for this process to end. Now, let me open a second PowerShell and show you a couple of interesting things we can do now. All right, here's my second PowerShell. So I have my Ubuntu running in one window and my PowerShell uh, windows running in another window. Now I could do list my running containers with Docker PS. This will tell me, uh, let me make this a little bit bigger, uh, will give me a couple of interesting information about the containers which are running. Now currently we just have one container running. Uh, every container has a container ID that's automatically given by Docker that's unique for every container. Then we know which image this container is running. We know which command this container is running. We know when it was created and we see that it's currently up for three minutes. And then we also have a name and uh, for the ports, we are going to talk later about them. There are no ports in this container. Now the name, the container name currently is given by Docker. We can also customize this and we are going to do this in one of the next lectures. Now, let me go back to my other terminal here inside my Linux box and just type in oh, exit. Now I'm back in my Windows prompt here. And if I'm going to type in Docker PS now, 
then my container disappeared. That is because Docker PS is only running, uh, only showing running containers. Now, if I type in Docker PS A, then it will also show me the containers which are exited. And I see here that my container from before is exited 17 seconds ago. Now, obviously, I can also start my container again, Docker start, and then I can either give it the container ID or the name of the container. Now, even better, I don't have to enter the whole container ID. I can just type in the first character here and it will be enough to identify uh, the one container that I want to start. So for example, docker start 8 and it will start this container here with this container ID. Now when I do docker ps now, you guessed it, the docker container is running again, but I'm not connected in any way to my container. How can I get back my connection to my container? I can attach to it with docker attach and then you guessed it probably the container id so i can say docker attach 8 and i'm back here in my container i can also manually stop the container from outside so over here in my second powershell i am attached to the process the command that is running inside my container and i can gracefully and ungracefully if i want to but i can gracefully stop Oops, that was the wrong number. Gracefully stop my container and I should get kicked out. Ah, yeah, I should get automatically kicked out of the container uh, in my second PowerShell window. Now, if I type in Docker PS, then I cannot see my container anymore. But if I type in Docker PS A, then I see the container exited again. Now, the thing is, sometimes I don't want to have my containers over here even as stopped. I want to remove them completely. I want to do a cleanup and to remove containers, I can type in docker rm and then the container ID uh, that is either this one or the container name. And in this case, I'm just going to remove this and docker ps-a is empty now. And that concludes our lecture over here. Uh, you can run through these commands yourself. I've attached our uh, exercise to this lecture. You can find it right here. And in the next lecture, we are going to talk about running multiple containers from the command line. And we're going to attach and detach from them. And I'm going to explain step by step what is going on before you can try it yourself. All right, I'll see you in the next lecture.